Like it or not, replacing electrolytic capacitors is par for the course when it comes to restoring or maintaining vintage electronics. Surface mount parts in particular can be especially troublesome, and there are multiple ways to tackle them. I have my own preferences, but I decided to challenge my assumptions and explore all the options. And what I learned really surprised me. If you've watched any of my previous episodes where I repair an old device, you probably know that I prefer one specific method for removing SMD caps. These circuit boards are often damaged due to leaking electrolytes, so I'm always conscious about trying to not make the situation worse. As such, I'm a big advocate of using hot air for desoldering, as I've found it to be the safest method, at least that I've used so far. Prices for hot air rework stations vary greatly, depending on capabilities and quality. This is a pretty basic one, a generic 858D style station with just a couple controls, temperature and airflow. It didn't cost me very much, maybe $50 US, though picking one like this can be tricky as they vary greatly in terms of quality. I've gotten lucky with this one so far, but others are built so poorly that they're downright dangerous. You really need to do your homework into specific models if you choose to go this route. There are of course better options, but the price goes up accordingly. A popular professional model like the Quick 861DW sells for close to $300. It's probably worth that price, but the average hobbyist might have a problem justifying it. Coupled with the crapshoot that surrounds the cheaper hot air station market, and it's understandable why some people prefer to take alternative approaches. Perhaps the most controversial of these is to simply rip the old caps right off the board. Some lever them off, others use a twisting motion, but in any event I've always hated this method as I've felt that the risk of damage to the PCB, specifically the solder pads that the caps mount to, is very high. The damage that leaked electrolyte can cause is bad enough, fixing torn pads is adding insult to injury. But I tried the process myself for the sake of this video. I had a motherboard from a Mac SE30 that had suffered not just from leaky caps, but also a clock battery that exploded. The board's too far gone to be worth repairing, so I salvaged the components for another project. I grabbed one of the caps with a pair of pliers, expecting the worst, but it just popped right off. As did the next one. And the next after that. These caps were really bad though, maybe this board was a special case? So I put another one up for testing. It was a few years newer and wasn't as damaged. But every SMD cap I pulled off came away clean here too. What happened to the horror show I was told to expect? Well, it turns out to indeed be real, as my friend Steve from the channel Mac84 was able to demonstrate. It apparently comes down to just how much the cap has leaked. The electrolyte is so corrosive that it damages the solder joint, so in a weird way, the more leaky the caps are, the more likely it is you can get away with this method. But if the caps are still good and you just want to replace them out of precaution, that's when you could get into trouble. A similar method that's slightly less ruthless is to cut the caps off the board. The idea is to use a pair of flush cutters and snip the cap off horizontally, then carefully pry up what remains until just the two legs are left. At that point, an iron and some desoldering braid is all that's necessary to clean up the pads. This process does work, and I'd imagine it has a higher success rate, but I still worry about the amount of pressure placed on the pads from the stress of snipping the cap. There's also the concern that you could be releasing more electrolyte by doing this, but if you clean it up right away, the effects should be negligible. Some may wonder if using a regular soldering iron might be effective, but in my experience, it's a fiddly and risky process. You have to alternate heating both sides, and if one of them isn't quite warm enough when you try to remove the cap, you could lift the pad. I'd consider it about as safe as snipping the caps off, 
but more tedious and tricky. Hot air is, of course, a method that doesn't involve physically touching the cap until it's ready to come off. By melting the solder joints, you're minimizing the risk of lifting the pads. But hot air isn't without its own caveats. First, it's fairly time-consuming as it can take a minute or two to heat up each part enough to melt the solder. Second, even with the use of narrow nozzles, you're still bound to get air on surrounding components. In a lot of cases, this is okay, but plastic parts like connectors can get scorched or melted, so it's a good idea to add heat shields to these in the forms of Kapton tape or metal foil, which also takes time. And finally, sometimes the process is a little dangerous. On more than one occasion, I've had caps swell up from internal pressure and burst. There is, however, one alternative that eliminates most of the drawbacks of the others, and they're called hot tweezers. Essentially, they're two soldering irons with special tips joined together with a spring, so you can use them one-handed. The idea is to pinch the component where it's soldered to the board, wait a moment for the joint to heat up, then just lift the part away. Because the heat is localized, there's much less risk to the surrounding area, and the cap you're removing doesn't get overheated either. After using them for a bit, I found them to be a quite compelling option. They're quick and convenient. The drawbacks to these are really their price and functionality. You can buy inexpensive ones right around the $50 mark, but that puts you in the same situation as with the cheap hot air stations. Some are okay, but many are trash, and you really have to do your homework. Models from reputable brands like the Hacko ones I bought will of course be a better experience, but the price will reflect that. I paid about $220 for mine, including the stand, but not including the base station necessary to power them. And of course, being a specialized tool, hot tweezers are unitaskers. They're good for dealing with small surface mount parts, and that's it. You could maybe try just using a pair of soldering irons, but I don't think I could ever get used to using two hands like that. Though I'm sure some people have no problems with it. So what's the ultimate answer here? Even though I had some success with it, I still can't recommend just ripping caps off of PCBs, as there seem to be a lot of variables at play. If you have zero budget for new tools, then cutting them off is probably the least worst option, provided you remember to be careful. Yeah, you may occasionally run into some trouble, but I was surprised to find that it wasn't quite as risky as I always thought it would be. On the other end of the spectrum, if you plan on doing a lot of recap work, hot tweezers make sense. You'll probably use them often enough to make the cost worth it. But for everyone else, I'd advise going with hot air. I'll admit that the process isn't the most convenient and you need to buy another tool, but the thing is, it's a multi-purpose one. Hot air is useful not just for removing caps, but all kinds of other surface mount rework, like replacing chips. In some cases, it's the only way to pull off a repair. So having one will not just make cap replacements safer, but broaden your abilities to fix things you may not have been able to previously. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Please consider supporting my work over on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching.